Hello, and welcome to this important event in the life of the Cleveland Clinic community, the annual memorial service for those who donated their bodies after death to medical research and education. I'm Reverend Amy Green, Director of the Center for Spiritual Care. This event is very important to us. Simply put, without these generous donations, real and tangible, and sometimes at great sacrifice to the family, it is safe to say that medical knowledge and treatment could not proceed. We honor these people for their selfless gift, but we also want to honor and thank you, their families, for honoring their wishes. In some cases, you may have preferred that your loved ones had chosen a more traditional funeral or memorial. We recognize that you too have made a gift to the future in honoring your loved one's wishes. Though we are having to conduct this service remotely this year, we hope that this will allow more people to participate, as well as to share this with other loved ones later. We appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Hello, I'm Dr. Jamie Stoller. I'm a lung doctor at the Cleveland Clinic, and I serve as chairman of our Education Institute. It's my deep honor on behalf of all the medical students in the Cleveland Clinic Learner College of Medicine, all faculty educators, and all caregivers at the Cleveland Clinic to greet you and thank you and your loved ones today. You know, this event immerses us in a spirit of altruism or selfless generosity, words that ring true throughout this process in our gathering. Altruism is behavior that benefits another at one's expense and without regard to one's own well-being. Altruism is paying forward. Altruism is like throwing a stone into a large, quiet pond. The ripples extend from the center of the pond in an ever-expanding, long-lasting pattern. As it does with us today, altruism has occupied the thoughts of great thinkers over time. Dr. Martin Luther King said, every man must decide whether he will walk in the light of creative altruism or in the darkness of self-destructive selfishness. Rabbi Hillel, in the first century BCE said, if I'm not for myself, then who will be for me? And if I'm only for myself, then what am I? And if not now, when? Finally, the American essayist Scott Adams said, remember there's no such thing as a small act of kindness. Every act creates a ripple with no logical end. In these quotes, we see that the ripple of altruism extends beyond the center and is truly everlasting. The altruism that you and your loved ones have shown in this generous donation is humanity at its very best. So we celebrate your loved ones and your family's generosity and altruism today and with our great and deep gratitude. The ripple has no end. Thank you so very much. My name is Dimitri Coombs, and I'm a rising chief resident in the Department of Plastic Surgery here at the Cleveland Clinic. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today about my experience with the Body Donation Program and our Cadaver Lab. It is a part of our hospital that we hold dear to our hearts and an essential resource for training the next generation of surgeon leaders. First, I'd like to emphasize that our department in particular has a long-standing relationship with the Cadaver Lab and Body Donation Program. This privilege is a pride of the residents in our program, but also the many residents in our other departments. As a first year resident, I vividly recall how dissection exposed us to the intricacies of upper extremity anatomy and reconstructive surgery. Many of these formative experiences involved a senior resident or attending physician taking a junior resident through some portion of a procedure. This speaks to the ability of body donation to inspire collaboration and teaching. As time has passed during our six year program, I have been fortunate to develop a deeper understanding of procedures involving the craniofacial skeleton and cosmetic surgeries of the face and neck. This was all made possible by the opportunities available through the Body Donation Program and Cadaver Lab. Since the first time I set foot in the lab, I have treasured the opportunity to learn from those who have donated themselves to the medical sciences. We have conducted many sessions in the Cadaver Lab over the years allowing us to not only refine our understanding of the anatomy, but the techniques necessary to perform safe and cutting edge surgical procedures. In plastic surgery, we have the pleasure of performing complex reconstructive procedures known as flaps. Through our sessions in the lab, we have been able to learn from one another, 
from visiting professors and take our reconstructive armamentarium to the next level. Due to the generosity of the donors, we have conducted numerous research projects and presented findings all over the country, aiding surgeons in many other parts of the world. Put simply, those who have dedicated themselves to medicine by donating their bodies have touched the lives of hundreds of trainees and in turn touched the lives of thousands of patients by advancing our ability to care for those in need. It is with the utmost gratitude and reverence that I say thank you for helping myself and my co-residents achieve our dreams of mastering the art and science of plastic surgery. We are truly blessed to have this resource at our hospital and I can say with confidence that my co-residents and attendings echo these sentiments. Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Melanie Katz and I am a fourth year resident in the obstetrics and gynecology program here at the Cleveland Clinic Foundation. I am honored and humbled to be speaking with you today. I will never forget my first patient from medical school. Her name was Millie, or at least that's what we called her. She was our guide, our teacher, and sometimes felt like our friend. We spent hours and hours together enjoying each other's company as she taught my classmates and me about the human body. I was able to find out things about her that many others may not have known about, including that she had an artificial knee and a fourth branch off of her aorta. Spoiler alert for all the nerds in the audience, it was actually an aberrant vertebral artery. Day in and day out, I not only learned anatomy from Millie, but I began to gain the confidence to become a clinician. And although I would not have believed it at the time, she gave me my first tools to become a surgeon. As the marathon of medical school continued, I reflected back on my time with Millie when I was in class learning pathology, sorting through a review of systems, or assisting in the operating room. She accompanied me as I started residency and was my cheerleader the first time that I had the honor of calling myself a doctor. During training, Millie has been my guardian through the routine laparoscopic hysterectomies, the emergency ruptured ectopic pregnancies, and the crash C-sections for babies in distress. She has stayed with me through all of the trials, tribulations, and joys of my journey in medicine. As a resident, I have also had the opportunity to meet some of your loved ones here at the Cleveland Clinic, and they too have become my patients. They have patiently led me to understand more complex anatomy and have helped me learn to navigate pelvic surgery. In the operating room, there are days in which I may reflect upon your loved one and the valuable lesson that she taught me about how to safely navigate through a difficult surgery. The days that we spent together will provide better outcomes for all of the women that I come into contact with as an obstetrician and gynecologic surgeon. Not only have your beloved family and friends helped guide my future practice in OBGYN, but they have also taught me how to be a teacher. They have been my trusted assistants as I bestow my love and passion for anatomy and medicine to the next generation of medical students. I'm sure that Millie looks down on me fondly as your loved ones and I work hand in hand to motivate and inspire the future leaders in our field. I remember the memorial service that we had in medical school to honor those who had donated their bodies to teach us. My classmates and I found ways to celebrate them in speeches, in song, and in art in the packed chapel at Syracuse University. Although the current times prevent us from gathering, I hope that our profound gratitude to you and your loved ones is palpable. I hope you feel our appreciation for your family or friend and the sacrifices that they made to teach us. And I hope you can sense the incredible impact that they have had on us and on our future patients. It has been a tradition for many years that at this point in the service, we would read aloud 
each and every donor name. Because these gifts were not anonymous, and we want to remember each individual who gave so selflessly. Instead, this year, we will simply pause for a few moments to read all the names silently in our own locations, giving thanks for their generosity and care for the good of their fellow human beings. Though your loved ones knew they would never benefit directly from their gift, they remind us that our deeds outlive us all. Thank you again for joining us for this service of remembrance. We hope that our gratitude is clear and that the magnitude of their gift is never forgotten. Blessings on you all. Go in peace, knowing that your loved ones gave a lasting gift.